What's happening guys? We got something a little bit different today on the channel. Me and Omar Isaf, my homie, have created a podcast, Mama's Boys Podcast, and it is live now. So here's a sample episode for you guys to check out. We're also giving away $500 of Reebok gear. And to enter, click the link in the description. We need rating and review on iTunes. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And also be sure to check out the YouTube channel, Mama's Boys, where we'll be hosting all the video versions of the podcast. But if you like the audio, we're on SoundCloud and iTunes right now and coming to Spotify and other platforms soon. I hope you guys enjoy it. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to Mama's Boys. Enter the contest. Enjoy, my friend. What? I'm ready. Are we going to intro this thing? Yeah. We're going to start hey. the fucking show? Uh, it already was started. Now Bro, we're ending. We're here Maybe. with the Asian Justin Timberlake. <laughs> wow. Quadruple fucking threat. Quintuple. You can rap. If you guys can see the setup here, sing. Was fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you can rap. I didn't say we're just like, you're, you're just, just starting out. Like, we're on the come up. You're just. We're gonna say that every bro. single podcast. <laughs> we're on the come up. Three years later, we're on the come up, guys. On a fucking iPhone. Dude, you're gonna be here. <laughs> you're gonna be here in three months with a golden fucking microphone, <laughs> with hands on it and shit like a Prince microphone. <laughs> oh, Prince. He's got that's a microphone, a doesn't he? That's a R.I.P. Bro, rest in power. Whenever you reference Prince, you gotta say that. Rest in power. You gotta take a picture of this. Guy was beginning shit, dude. Yeah, bro. That's how we. That's the hustle. You, uh, you respect the hustle. I know. This is like six years ago when I first. <laughs> this is like ten years ago. This is the start of the start of the start. Yeah. Uh, but hold on. You said so. You said uh, so. He could rap. Yeah, rap. He can sing. sing. We're gonna. We might make you do all three of those. So, you, so you better get the the is, lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. You better get ready, bro. Is dancing a possibility? I, I've never seen him yeah. dance, but I bet he Comedy. can. I absolutely cannot dance. <laughs> but you could cook. Yeah, of course I could cook. He can yeah. cook. He can act. And they do like stand up comedy and shit back in the day. It's called Jack of All Shits. I'm mediocre and like a lot of different things. <laughs> that's good though. Jack of All Trades, a master yeah. of none. That's yeah. fine. You yeah. throw it against the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. We just keep trying until someone tells us to stop. That's basically yeah. our philosophy. What, on what was the start, bro? What was what, what was the first? I mean, you grew up you grew up here in Sacramento with me. Yeah, not with me, but same city. <laughs> he's like he's like bitch. I didn't know. No, we didn't know each other. He went to a very nice school. Yeah, oh, we, we did. I could see the preppiness yeah. in every step that you did. We did. When it, you made that post on Instagram where you had the uh, uh, like Adidas like knockoff with four stripes, yeah. I could relate to that. That's what I related <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. He went to a very very affluent no, school. No, I went there no. for free, but yeah, I did. Yeah. It was a fancy school. I used school. to think that his school had like wizards and shit. And they, that's that's what what I mean. was like where Harry yeah. Potter went to and shit, like, like probably. Was it Waldorf or Waldorf? Yeah, Waldorf. Yeah, Waldorf. Yeah, yeah. That Waldorf uh, Hotel in like New York is like a super Unrelated. Fancy. The, the, Unrelated. I know, but the name just sounds fancy. It's a good salad. Yeah, I used yeah. to like clown on people at a school only because I was jealous. Yeah. 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 Uh, it made me feel better about there's myself. A, <laughs> there's a uh, Waldorf down in your hood too. Uh, oh, really? Like uh, by Freeport, uh, or not, yeah, by Freeport. Has uh, been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so small though. Like that one's even smaller. Yeah, I don't even know about that. Yeah, yeah. It's like a. Uh, the airport's right there, yeah. and then it's literally behind like a Chinese restaurant. Uh, <laughs> it's like sense. tucked behind. Yeah. So this is where the special kids go to school. Yeah. Is that, uh, or if you just have money, that's basically. I don't know. Restaurant I don't know. It's open really, really late, so we used to go eat there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Jada Pinkett Smith went there. Tupac went there. Jennifer Tupac Aniston. Went there? Yeah, they went to like. He's a, from uh, Sacramento. Uh, no, no. Oh. Waldorf's International. It's oh, from Germany. Okay. Uh, yeah. They went to one in uh, like Brooklyn. Okay. Anyways, from the real and, beginning, right and here, me. Relating, relating back to the yeah, Adidas well, four, uh, uh, four Stripe. Yeah, what was the start? Like. Acting or singing, rapping? Uh, I started with stand-up comedy, but then like I tried to do music after, like yeah, you know, in, actually not even after that shit, like simultaneously together, just because like you know, music gets you pussy. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> but comedy. You, think I, didn't know, you <laughs> think I didn't notice that with you and your cooking? Like I see every <laughs> endeavor you went in, it's all about the booty. Like every, <laughs> everyone wants someone that could cook, sing, like. Cooking. I see it. Be I, funny. I know it. I understand. I feel like cooking uh, probably brings you the most because you don't have to be like American. Cooking? Yeah. Singing. No, no, no. In, no, no. Your, let me give an okay. argument. So like it's cooking, pitch. you don't have to be America's top chef to get a girl like, hey, let me cook you a nice dinner. Yeah. You could just be a dude. Hey, let me cook you a nice dinner. If you cook her a dope dinner, she's in. But if you're like, oh yeah, I'm a singer, she's gonna laugh at your ass unless you have like a record or iTunes or something. You know, like the no. Yeah, wait, dude, I, if a girl comes over, I'm like, hey, baby, 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 baby. But that's baby. you, if you can sing, <laughs> I'm, I'm just putting this way, I've seen so many uh, famous, like let's say Instagram, or, or like whatever, just people uh, hanging out with yeah. like SoundCloud, like singers, <clears throat> artists, all that stuff. I don't think you have to make it, go on, David. Yeah, I mean, even now too, like, like it's just like, God, people who, Jesus. Ray, bro, just yeah, hit it. Let it out. Let, I know tell them the truth. You feel something deep you know, in all you want to say. I think kids are. It's a lot easier to impress people now because mm. yeah. everybody's impressed by anything now. Yeah, yeah. Like I've heard some like terrible singers, and these girls are like, yo, this guy's really good. I'm like, yeah. damn, your pussy lips are loose. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are yeah. that easily impressed. It is. And bad. like literally that night, like I'll go to these shows, and there's like these kids who, uh, you know, mind you, like I'm not knocking on these kids for like. You know, trying to do it. No, you're knocking on them. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> but you're like, saying there's, yo, there me, needs to be a certain me, level of talent. Let me just tell you this quick story. So um, 
I was out in, um, what's it called? Buffalo, New York. Okay. One of the most talentless cities on earth. <laughs> <laughs> what about the wings? What about the yeah. wings? Oh, the wings in Buffalo. I've heard it's real. Yeah. I heard you have it's to make real. up for something. No matter where you go, yeah. Buffalo wings in Buffalo, New York are amazing. The shit. I okay. heard it's real. Yeah. And, so, and I saw Niagara Falls too, which was very lackluster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, water. Time yeah, I went there like, look, and I'm like, that's cool. Let's get the fuck out of here. Where are cool. the wings? <laughs> I had the worst story happen in Niagara Falls. Go on. Yeah, so there was. Um, so I, I had to judge a talent show, right? Mind you, like I love watching talent shows. Like it's it's pretty cool watching like people trying to like go out there and try new things. Uh, there's this one cat who I thought was like the shit. This did this fool did this like bit where he was like seeing Lady Gaga in like his Chinese accent. I was in tears. <laughs> I was like busting up, grabbing everybody, laughing my ass off, and they came for the scorecards. Uh, I gave this fool like a perfect 10 and everybody looks at me and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, dude, that guy was a fucking hilarious ass dude, right? It's like, dude, he was serious. Oh no. Oh. So during his he just whole, had an accent? During his whole set, I was, ah! I was like, bro! <laughs> I was grabbing at everybody, oh, yeah. cracking the yeah. fuck up. And I had no idea that he was serious. So I was Dang. literally laughing at this guy's face. Guy's face. Poor guy. Oh. We gave him a 10. No, we gave him a 10. But yeah. check this out. Though. So afterwards, he comes up to me and goes, hey, David, so like, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, maybe we should collaborate together. Maybe work on a song. I was like, you fucking delusional fuck. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then these girls told me yeah. they were hyping him up to me. She was like, yo, this guy's really good. So I was like, dude, that... that and they, that, made it, they meant it seriously. Seriously. Oh, and so like, their level of what they think yeah, perception is a, is a little off. And even then, that night, I saw that fool go walk away with the girl. I was like, <sighs> God damn, yeah, like, dude. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. I, I, I was going to say just quickly, I think what it is, because everything's so ubiquitous, like everyone's putting out content, it yeah. makes everyone think that they can do it. And that's not a bad thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but because, you can't do it. But Not everybody you know, can't do because it. Because <laughs> so many people are doing it, the quality has actually degraded over time. It's much like uh, YouTube or anything else. So that if you're, let's say, the shit is the standard. If you're like pretty shit, but not like pure shit, they're like, oh, that's not bad. So the standard has dropped, I think, oh, over time. Also technology. auto-tune, people can't yeah, say. I was going to say, well, you just get performers <laughs> back in the day. You get a fucking Mac Pro in 2006 and you think you're Pharrell on fucking garage yeah, yeah. Like everyone's <laughs> making a beat in the garage. Yeah. Like, I made a beat, bro. Yeah, like, like, sick. No, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of like YouTubers too. Like I see them, they, they like, they want to try music. And yeah. then, you know, these kids too, they they have such high levels of fandom. They're like, you're an amazing musician. You're the blah, best. Blah, blah. And I listen to the music, I'm like, holy shit, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to them, they don't, they don't yeah. give a fuck. And you know these these like young cats that are on YouTube, they fucking eat their own shit so much. You know they're like, yeah, like I wasn't really you know, the humble bragging type. Yeah, of yeah. I wasn't really trying, or like my throat was sore yeah. when yeah, I recorded like, well, this. You know, like you're fucking out of tune, like a bitch. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, come on, be real with yourself. You know what <clears> yeah. I mean? But even then, like they're they're so delusional, they they don't even see it themselves. Well, if you don't know music at all, like there's a difference between even judging a talent show uh, from your perspective and probably someone who's next to you just uh, that just listened to Gaga or some on the radio. Yeah. You don't know what real music yeah. and you don't you know anything. Discern. Yeah, People you, say like I mean, music is subjective as well. It, I mean, it is. Well, there are standards that yeah, you can judge. There like, are. Someone hitting a note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's basic standards but then there's also things that you just know like ah, that's hard. Uh, yeah. That's not hard. Like oh, even to do, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. you do, uh, you did a, a diss me track on yourself with the uh, Kendrick Lamar yeah, song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and how you spit in that and rhyme to the exact flow that he has is not easy. Yeah. Uh, and so I heard that I'm like, oh, like that's actual fire. Like one, your lyrics made sense. Two, they're actually funny. And three, they're the exact cadence that he rapped it at. That's fucking difficult. Those are hard. Uh, right? Yeah. And people are like, oh, you know, they probably just think it's funny because you did a spit or whatever. Like no, like that probably oh, took that you hours. Hard, yeah, it probably <laughs> took you hell. Yeah. Really I bet it, it took you a long ass time. Everyone's like, oh, like yeah. I know David could rap like no like David could actually rap like that's yeah. actually rapping it was like it's hard because it's like I'm trying to like the cadence is very difficult yeah so, you know like you're trying to imitate what this other rapper does which is like well, a really good rapper does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah like, not oh, just shit. anybody so it took a you know it took a while for me to yeah do it. I was like oh, god damn this is actually hard so to rewrite 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 but there's this one cat um, that I just found out about recently. His name is like Rice Gum, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've yeah, heard of Rice yeah, Gum. Yeah. Kid, right? yeah. Terrible rapper. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's crushing it. He's crushing it. You can hear he's like everywhere. His... Yeah. Like, no, he's... Uh, what is he, 16? Uh, he I heard it. he's a big fan of Bart and all them. Oh, no. Oh, sure. David, you're better. You better. Oh, I'm not really. No, yeah. I, this is just no, no, no. No, no, no. no. I think he knows. I don't know the fucking kid, but no, he doesn't know. So he puts out like, he says, yo, I really work. He has a really nasally voice. That's what I was going to say. boards and like, you know, these trash rappers out here. And I was like, but. Oh, he so, thinks he can so rap? the whole time when, he, when I was watching his videos, I thought that he was doing That's a parody. A parody. That's, no. So I was like, yo, this kid's dope. Because it was super funny. It was, yeah, yeah. So 100% bad, serious. But he's actually 100% serious. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh shit. I didn't know that. I but thought... I like, well, felt kind of bad once again. It was like that talent show thing all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Where I was like... That oh, measly fuck. voice. I thought he was a parody, too. I thought he, I thought he knew not. he died. No. Because, like, I thought... Uh, 
Because if you go like, go too hard and you have no talent, you end up being Soldier Boy. And like any, so Soldier Boy is a great example of what I was just talking about. Like if you know music, you're like, nah, that doesn't make take much talent. Yeah. Like it takes like yeah. a little bit of like a, a, a catchy phrase and and some fucking eight oh eight. Some auto tune. Yeah, yeah. So, but the, but the thing about like rappers like Soldier Boy too, I think they know what their lane is. You know yeah. what I mean? So and the staying kid, in their lane. So that kid like Rice Bum, like his his shit. I'm sorry, I say his name wrong. Rice Bum, Rice Bum. Yeah, he's crying right now, just so, so you know. Bum, nah, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a great kid, whatever, whatnot. But like, he's 16, so yeah. that uh, brings a whole you other factor. You find out he's 20. Yeah, he's yeah, so he just got yeah, his yeah. pubes. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he doesn't know. You, you know find out he's 20. Fucking millionaire fucker. Yeah, 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 it doesn't matter. No matter what I say, he, I, I'll still work for you, kid. I'll write you, I'll ghost write. I'll still fucking scrub your toilet, so don't, you know, don't take this like, who the fuck am I, you know? But he's trying to write lyrical rap. So oh. that's why I thought it was hilarious. I didn't know that. It was like it was like some like he was like a, some kind of a nose like fades like super cuts and they started cracking the sauce. Like this guy's funny. <laughs> so I was like, yo, this kid's dope. But then I found out he was trying to be serious. He's trying yeah. to be a lyrical rapper. I was like, yo. Yeah. Did you see his uh, response to iDubs when they had that whole? Uh, I actually didn't call? see that. I only found out about the i. I found out about him because of that iDubs video. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, this kid's a little, you know, he's a little on the spectrum. Yeah, you know? and then his uh, response. I was gonna ask you because we're sitting here around a table, musicians like uh, Mike plays. Oh, uh, I'm drums. thinking of the wrong I guy. Uh, no, uh, what are you thinking about? No, he did. You did the perfect when you said nasally, like I his know. voice. Yeah. And it, when he raps, it, it, like he doesn't mask it. It's still like you know Eminem when he raps, he yeah. has like a voice that he puts on. Uh, same like Rice Cut just sounds like himself and it's like super nasally. Well, he just sounds like a kid that I would like stole his lunch money. From, yeah, you know what I mean? when he he's rapping out hard. He is. Yeah. Uh, what were you gonna say, Mike? I you, you don't know. Yeah, so lead the way. I was gonna say uh, <laughs> we're surrounded by table musicians. Uh, Mike plays drums. I played some jazz piano and stuff. My brother's a guitar player. I played player. every instrument. Name I, it, bro. I played cello. That's what, why do you think I, I played the trumpet? Prince, the go. Uh, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I played the so, recorder. Uh, the sea flute. I heard uh, piano. The, the singing guitar. The uh, I sang in a choir. Singing in a choir, you know, it's everyone can do it. Uh, so agreed, and I don't have a good voice, uh, and, <laughs> oh, but at least oh, I know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, at least so I, know I was gonna say, uh, David, do you play uh, like any instruments? Like you sing very poorly um, guitar, okay. very poorly piano. Because I oh really? You, you don't. You, I haven't done it in so long. Like, yeah, I tried playing the guitar the other day. I was like, no, fuck this shit. Bro. I'm not doing this all over again. <laughs> you, you, that it is uh, one of the things that like you have to keep up. Like I was never some stellar you have drummer. Some pitch recognition. I was gonna say. Like, yeah, yeah. Made me think piano. Maybe you did. Yeah, it, it, there's some of that I do think's natural. But then same thing like to actually like. Uh, hit a flow or whatever like you have to practice and like same with drumming like drumming came kind of natural to me I was no star jazz drummer, but I could drum a little bit just because I had rhythm naturally yeah, 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 But yeah. then if I went hopped on right now, it'd be garbage yeah. just because yeah, there's still cool. chops You gotta yeah, rust like, out. I, like I tried playing the guitar the other day and it was so difficult Like I can't yeah. remember a damn chord to yeah. song and I was just Look at this and like, I got time for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> just no matter what, you're still better than Lil Wayne. Like, when he picked up that <laughs> His guitar, guitar, that was just, bad. that was it's so sad. bad. It's the worst, I, the worst. I think he is a good uh, rapper, uh, and he had a, such a solid career, and then he started going so south. I feel like so much music recorded, he could, like, release an album for the next 50 years. <clears throat> Talk about hustle. Yeah. There, that's a whole other part of he music has, and, he, and everything we do. He has, like, this, uh, he has an engineer with him everywhere he goes. So, like, sure. he, he's on call. Yeah, on, uh, on his uh, bus, I think he's, like, recording. Yeah, so he'll back. just be, like, chilling, and if he's, like, in his hotel, he wants to record a track, he calls up the engineer. He has to wake up, go over to his room, yeah. and start doing his shit. Crazy. <laughs> like, that's yeah. amazing. Crazy. Yeah. So for you, uh, you did some singing. Uh, what was it? But stand up was the first thing, like, because you are a man that has a lot of different talents. What was the one you wanted to pursue first? You said oh, stand up was a stand up. So, music, so <laughs> and who were the inspirations? Because I hear you have a falsetto style, like, so you yeah, you get out there. So, like, who are the like inspirations? R. Kelly? Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> I was like, boys to men, Brian and I type of okay. stuff. Yeah, I mean, like Tyrese. Star back in <laughs> world. Yeah, that was my shit. Yeah. It was so funny. <laughs> David, David's cringing you know, on this. So <laughs> was, this mic's broken now. But <laughs> the funny thing was, like, I, I know, so my girlfriend bought me two. She knows how much I love Brian Manette. She likes Brian Manette, too. Yeah. But she didn't realize how much I like Brian Manette. I think he was just here in sack. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's still touring and yeah. stuff. But uh, she took me to, for my birthday, she got me a bunch of Brian Manette concert tickets. And it was like, literally towards the front and she didn't realize how much of his music I knew he played every single song just crushing it just crushing it and there was like literally that concert is like me and her and then like 300 like 300 pound black woman that's it and they're all they're all in their 40s too yeah and I was singing all the lyrics he's going to look at me like what the hell why you know all this music I'm like shut up and I'm over here just like screaming at him I'm like trying to throw my boxes at him and shit like it was all crazy take me to your hotel the only reason why I know all those songs too I remember specifically because when I was 18 I got dumped by my very first girlfriend and then his music call her out what's her name call her out she's messing up you don't you remember her name is she doing well right now 
No, she's. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to her in like eight years. She's not doing good. Okay. You're okay. crushing her, bro. Okay. I'm pretty. I mean, she was. She wasn't that bad of a person. <laughs> it just didn't work out. But he was the. Uh, he was the one that soothed your soul. You listen to his music, and you're like, everything's gonna be all right. Is that the type of thing? Yeah, I don't know what. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, crime. I, I cried so much. I was just like, oh, <laughs> a sensitive soul. Like, How did this fool write this music for me? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that's why I know all these boys <laughs> to men music. It was just for being dumped <laughs> once. Boys to men. Uh, that whole uh, not only genre but time in R and B. Uh, will never be duplicated, yeah. uh, and it's so amazing. It's so uh, some people let it towards the edge of cringy, uh, but some of them when they crush it, like it gives, it's still like a good like voice of men song. Give me goosebumps. You're like, oh, oh yeah, sure, that's dude. yeah, oh, buddy, you're talking to me. Sometimes I just want to get dumped again, so just I just feel, feel the music, yeah, yeah. just yeah. like how, how, how much it struck you. Yeah, just fucking dump me real quick and get back to me after, and there'll just be a song that specifically towards it. You know, fuck, man. What did uh so what did your girlfriend think when you're singing all along? Because I had something similar where I had a, a girlfriend uh, take me to a Slash concert, like a, this guitar player, and I knew like all this the songs. guitar player. We yeah, goddamn all, those all, Slash, all, right, bro? All, all, all the lyrics, everything, and uh, and like at one point she was like, like it's like cool, whatever. I'm like there, I know everything, and then she kind of just like looked at me like you know everything. Like I know you're a fan, but not yeah. this much of a fan. You know, we didn't know you're in love. Yeah, wait, was she kind of uh your girlfriend when you said you're singing along? Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I didn't want to say that. Yeah. Does she not? listen to any of it she does but then like just to have like yeah the, grown ass man like is the only one in the fucking concert <laughs> extreme every song is a little embarrassing extreme you know I mean? i'm like harmonizing with the guy too <laughs> shit. Like, one you end up on end. stage yeah. <laughs> yeah. So i kind of like way want him to bring me on yeah. so we can yeah. do a duet yeah. together yeah. 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 like brian i sing too yeah. <laughs> you know oh man yeah <laughs> It's like, yeah. why did you stop? Yeah. Like, uh, you're you're you did some singing on YouTube. Uh, you did a little bit of rapping on YouTube, and it's all like uh, views are all relative, right? Like, it's yeah, all relative yeah, yeah. to the channel. Like, they're obviously. Well, you put out this stuff, and people but people it. liked it's not, it. It's not like yeah. You know, so sometimes when you said someone, let's say they do comedy, and then they'll try and get a, uh, singing or whatever, and it doesn't do as well, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But like, you have a cooking show uh, now, you do, and they all do well. Like, they all yeah. uh, none of them do poorly. So the point is, you could kind of maybe focus on any of them. Like, what makes you decide what to push and what to hold back because you kind of we're talking off uh, camera about that the whole idea you only have so much time I'm just, so how do you I'm just like the worst business guy ever you know <laughs> so like I I literally just do whatever I like yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I think like that's kind of like you're towards like I wouldn't say like my minimal success but it's more like if I had focused on one thing then it would have skyrocketed better yeah. but I'm not that type of person who can do that because I get bored yeah yeah sure we're so, a little bit similar yeah you know so it's kind of more like <laughs> the lines success, of life yeah like you try something out, but I'll try it myself first before I put it out to the fucking public. Sure. You know, it's just like with nowadays, they're just like, I'm gonna just put it out to the public yeah. first. And if, you know, the public tells them that they're bad, they think that the public is stupid. Right. It's just like, no, you're just trash. And that's okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trash in a lot they of things. You don't understand too. my art. Your YouTube took off because of like comedy and skits and kind of like uh, stand up stuff on YouTube, which I, I thought was uh, unique because I'm not that like uh, familiar with everybody on YouTube. You know, we try yeah. to stay up because we're in the world I a little bit. I don't yeah. Know but I, I know you were one of the first people I found that were like uh, doing a stand up basically on. Like a vlog yeah. mode, which was dope. I thought that was yeah. cool, and, and you made good cuts here and there. Like, but, but it wasn't over edited. Well, I was say being uh, genuinely funny, I think it was a difference. Yeah. And then uh, uh, kind of in JK News, maybe that was like showcase where like you don't have so there. Uh, there's some people that use a lot of editing to like make a comedic thing, but like yeah. you're quick on your feet, and so like it works on a lot of different formats. And I think maybe that was one of the. Yeah, it's just because like I think I was like one of the first people on YouTube that actually had a legitimate stand-up background. It wasn't like oh I did a couple of stand-up shows yeah. and then they did like I legitimately wanted to be a stand-up yeah. comedian sure. at that point from like 16 all the way to like what 24. That's a lot of years under yeah. your belt. So like at that point, like I just try to. I mean, it was just like stand up on crack, and you know, at that time, three minute format was king. So yeah. you couldn't go past three minutes, or people would have lost interest. That transfers so, perfectly. Yeah, so I just had to take stand up and condense it and make it a little more intense, or a lot more intense, anyways. But that that was just the general segue that I had for it. Uh, it and it's weird too because when I I remember watching the first person, I didn't know that you could actually do make content on. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I thought you had like, some kind of special account or some sure. shit. So watch Korean drama and shit and learn how to fix my car. You know <laughs> what? What year would this be around, uh, David? When you started, like, kind of just looking at YouTube. Oh, shit, what was I fucking? It's like six years ago. Or something okay, like that. And around there, and then I, this guy named Shane Dawson. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really big guy. I don't mm -hmm. know what he's up to now, but you know, guy was killing it. I yeah. saw his stuff, and you know, no offense to him, but this is me being a hater back in the day. I saw his stuff. I was like, wow, this guy's trash. So yeah. I like, so let me do Here I yeah. No, I, dude, I think we I felt think, the same way when it comes to fitness. Not that people in podcast, we could do it at the same level, if not <laughs> yeah, better. I mean, no, I think that uh, the difference between being a hater is you talking shit from your couch. 
Yeah. Uh, and if you're That's not a hater, is you a you talking point. shit and you're gonna prove them You'll, wrong. Yeah, I'll put uh, we'll put ourselves forward. It's like you yeah. can judge me against what That's I'm fine. hating against. Like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call out every podcast that's out there that they fucking suck, and then this one's <laughs> gonna be funnier and more entertaining. Like exactly. that's just how it is. For me, it was just more like because I had like a stand up background. I was like, I could do this better because yeah. I didn't know that guy was trying to be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. So let me let me just do what I'm gonna do, and then you know the channel blew up and so on and so forth. Yeah. When was the first time you put music on that channel? And then I actually had a music channel before I did really, and it didn't do that well. No, it did well. It had oh. like it had like at that time it had like twenty thousand subscribers and twenty thousand was like <laughs> yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. That's People a, that's don't a understand channel. context, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and so, so it had an equivalent. I mean, I think like at that time the equivalent would be like having like half a million subscribers, yeah, yeah. which is a decent amount. No, it's good. Yeah. So like I focused on that, and originally I had that music channel because I was trying to teach my. So I used to be a youth minister too. So I was trying to like teach. Wow, oh, that well, went. Yeah. Oh, go, go in on I, that. Hold on. Back was up. Like, you, I, David. I started with that because I was trying to teach my youth kids how to play guitar. So I would upload these. videos. All those kids in jail now, huh? Yeah, the worst, <laughs> the the worst mentor ever. <laughs> so could have played that G it chord. Was like, these like tutorials and stuff. And oh, I that's cool. Up there and I just put a covers here and there. Yeah. And that that kind of did well. But there's like a certain point in your life you start to realize like you can't just do so many different things and be good at it. So I yeah. decided to drop music and just do comedy so i actually deleted that channel oh really so it's gone, gone. It, it, it's gone is no that because i've never seen it yeah i haven't so either like, is that just because you think you were uh had a better chance at comedy like you were better at yeah, it even though you love music like, like you said you want to be a musician uh it wasn't that i was I, I just didn't like it as much you know what i mean so it's, it was more like uh so there was this time i did like this stand-up show for my friend vince and we used to do like these community shows um at like whatever you know the like dance music whatever halls and the shit variety shows and shit uh, I was supposed to do music and I just remember I was doing stand-up still at the time I just kind of like looked at it I remember I was on stage I still remember this to this day because he was already kind of freaked out a little bit I was like hey I can't do music he's like what? <laughs> and I literally just the night up, my guitar yeah. and I just grabbed the mic and I started doing stand-up wow. instead yeah and I did like a 30 or 20 minute yeah. set and then you know it killed it did really fucking well and people were cracking the fuck up and I was just like, oh shit, maybe I actually like this more. Yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, I've never done stand-up comedy, but I've been a fan of it for a long time. I listen to Rogan's podcast, and people talk about comedy a lot, and it does seem, and even just like my personality, I'm the guy in the room that wants to make people laugh. Sure. And like that even feeling of being in a group uh, 10 at dinner, uh, that feeling is uh, obviously amplified when you're on stage with hundreds of people. Yeah, it is It is more unique than anything else. I've, I've played drums in front of probably 5,000 people, uh, and it was cool, and the energy's cool, but one, it's drums, so you're in the way back, no one gives yeah. a fuck what you're doing. And you can't feel that God. reciprocity yeah. of the reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you're doing with the, a joke, it's instantaneous, like 100%. that feeling. 100%. Even if I twirl my sticks, no no panties are dropping, but if you make a good joke, uh, some shit might drop on stage, you know? Yeah. So back to that question, though, David, about what gets mo like the most amount of pussy, cooking, music, Comedy. Well, now comedy. I don't know because you know, but I'm thinking when I was younger. Yeah. What would like, you What would you think? Like between the three, mind you, like that's like music was a way to offset my trashy looks. <laughs> so it was I, like, would, I would go for music out of those three. I would say music. I mean, music opinion. was the one that got girls the most. And mind you, too, like I'm not talking about like you know, for anybody listening, it's like oh, if you do music, it instantly means you're gonna get a girl. Yeah. Absolutely not. But you know, when when the odds are against you, you gotta bring out <laughs> we gotta stack everything. You know, in your I gotta bring out the tools. No, I got jokes, bitch. Too stay, stay. I can also cook. I was like, which one? Like, like talking age and like I'm like you know so I'm just you know this was like like little things that I would do just your to get walking a variety the show and, you know what I mean <laughs> you know how I'm like doing bitch I'll stand on my head <laughs> yeah so you know music was one of those things but I think like the at that time in high school music was it college it was sure. the jokes yeah you know what I mean so it depends on what age gap that yeah you're in. Uh, so that I think huge too right because like who's really loving Justin Bieber like some sixteen year old girls that don't know any different like yeah. a twenty five year old chicks like no, that dude's a cokehead. Like I don't care if he can sing into my ear, whispering me sweet exactly. nothing. And then that cooking slash humor is something like that a thirty-year-old. Yeah. No, <laughs> more so you're, what's what's going to carry you up into your forties then? Like what's so that was like a good know, attack scene with retirement. Yeah, yeah. I think like your twenties comedy. If I'm forty and I'm single at that point, yeah. you done to, fucked up. I just yeah. Keep I get a couple cats. Wrong. I just have to look good for my age. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like one of those things. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I was gonna say for you, were you always kind of quick on your feet? Like growing up, was that one of the things where in class, like Mike was kind of talking about? Uh, that sense of exhilaration, you tell a joke, you get it back. Were you always kind of that kid in class, like cracking jokes or what? How, like, how did that come about? I just grew up like with a lot of black folks. And you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like black people just like clown each other all yeah, the yeah, time. Roast, roast so if you're like that only Asian kid in the group, they're gonna try to roast you first. Yeah. So you gotta so roast me, back I would hard. Just roast back really hard. And what I found <laughs> out too is just like, I guess kind of like when you grow up with a bunch of people who just like clown each other 24 7. Uh, 
that doesn't really translate as well to like the outer youth who grew up a lot nicer. Yeah. So like when uh, like I remember like on Twitter, I don't do it anymore, but somebody would just write some kind of stupid comment towards me, but that would write some like harsh ass shit back, you know, cause that's just, just go in. Yeah. yeah. But then they're like, well, that's too far. I was like, what are you starting? But yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that there was levels of what you can and yeah. can't say. Yeah. It's just like, I oh, think, no. <laughs> yeah, I think it does depend. Uh, Obviously, where you grew up, how you grew up, but even like there's little subcultures everywhere. Like I yeah. did grow to a fancy school my whole life, uh, but just going to get a better, give a street rep. Right uh, now. Well, just going to the basketball culture is the same thing. Oh, uh, basketball culture, same. You find yeah, it. yeah. So worse, all you do is roast like all day, yeah. like uh, in a game, serious, off the court, joking. Like, yeah. but but that, it's it's probably where I got my shit too. Yeah. Like shit talking, uh, but then turning it light so you don't get punched. Yeah. You know, like, how you handle yourself on the internet also is totally different than real life. Yeah. I mean, we had a, I had a. Uh, like guests on the channel and someone wrote a negative comment towards him just said like hey man I think your information is wrong whatever and his insult so that was like whatever that was like a fair criticism yeah. and he said something like like I fucked your mother so yeah. this is responding like, he just went in against him like he <laughs> elevated that game so hard yeah. like the guy that I had on the channel because it wasn't used to like I yeah. think I think it would have came off better in real life like if the guy said that and he cracked as a joke but just yeah. writing those words came across so cold I, I think it's another so thing uh, not to switch too many topics but like you talked about having 20,000 people or whatever six years ago on YouTube or whatever even me you know like I'm barely at 100 now uh, but mine was such a slow growth Mike, like please I've been, don't promote your YouTube <laughs> but y'all can follow me. Uh, but I, but I've been on the internet for like five years. You learn uh, like with the slow growth, you learn how to handle shit uh, with anything, right? A job, a career, yeah. singing. Rather than like if you just go viral, where a lot like you said, like channels, everyone's popping up with a million channels or a million subscribers. They have meltdowns up with, over things that happen where they and, can't take either a joke or they yeah, can't they're freaking out. Or Instagram's even worse. Well, it's also because like the kids who blow up now, I mean, they're also more current, so they they do stuff that. It's very popular, and they don't know how to do it. And they're super yeah. young, too, so they're, yeah. they're going to melt down. They're a bunch of pussies. So it's like... Yeah. If you, you insult know, Jake Paul one more time, I'm going to lose <laughs> my fucking shit. You know, like, mind you, too, because I'm only putting it in this perspective. If I was yeah. 16 and I got that shit, I'd have yeah. a meltdown, too. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know you know you don't I mean? So they're, they're a little younger, and, you know, their fucking brains are pussified. So they're yeah. not used to getting, like, real world, like, coming, like, crushing down yeah. on them. Like, they're like, this person left me a comment. I'm super yeah. impressed. Well, what the fuck, bitch? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what yeah, They don't have that... I hate using that word, but they don't have that, like, grind or being rejected. Basically yeah. being like like their ass handed, or to even them filtering through shit. Like, what's actual critique? What could I learn from? What's garbage that I should just throw away? Yeah. And then and then if someone's actually threatening me, how do I go back at them? Yeah, Which and, is a rare case. Sometimes obviously. too, like I get, <laughs> you know, if I write like a comment back, you know, these kids are like, man, he's super angry. It's like, no, I'm most likely I'm probably taking a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, bored, yeah. My yeah. I was like. All right, I might yeah. as well respond yeah. to this. You know what I mean? But that's their world, though. That's how they view it. They see, like, if you respond back, that means you were... Yeah. You were oh, and they, and they, oh, they won. won. Yeah. So that's... The whole trolling game, to me, uh, never made any sense because they're trying to get a rise out of you. But it's almost like someone saying, hey, 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 hey. Like, trying to get your attention. And then you're like, hey, man, uh, can you just quiet down over there? And they're like, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Like, you well, said something. You're like, I, no, like, you were being the hella annoying kid in class. I, like... Yeah. Annoying everyone else. I, I do think yeah. that's semi real, and it just has to do with age. Because there's a kid in school, right? That's always fucking flicking your be uh, like the yeah. your hoodie or something. I would just smack the shit out of him in person. Right. So it's yeah. like I know what I mean, different? but that, yeah. but that's the troll. That's the same thing uh, in, on the internet, and then now it's a desperate cry for attention. Yeah. There, there's weird. adults like, on the internet. It's like oh, uh, I think was it you the poster or someone? I just read it, or maybe like some comedian where someone said along the lines like, if you're a troll, like leaving comments like like month after month, I've had this happen to me like year after year. I'm like, you're not a hater. I'm like, bitch, you're a fan. Yeah, yeah, you're here every day. That dedicated, like just take some in word retrospection yeah. of yourself introspection and yourself to see like what's going on it's like if you leave that much comments like yeah. maybe you secretly like the content yeah, you, you love know, me like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, when you know also too like the people who leave those comments they happen to be channels with like they just made it the other day or yeah, they, yeah. they have no pictures of their face and you know they're not going to really see it's the it's, anonymity of the it's, internet it's just like the like i just kind of like learned to deal with it in the sense of like the world that we live in now is just evolved or devolved or however you want to call it in a different way you know so yeah. people they look for, and it started with our generation too, with MySpace and everything yeah. else, because they're looking for validation through those comments that they write. 100%. And they're just waiting for somebody to like. And they're waiting for somebody yeah. to say, oh, you're funny, or oh, blah, blah, blah. And they thrive off that shit. I mean, probably they, I mean, I don't mean to say that, I, you don't have friends. You know? like, <laughs> you know just I mean? go, David, just like, go for it. Like, yeah. you don't have friends. You're probably a fucking loser. Yeah, focus and, on stuff else. This is like something that I'm just assuming because if you're sitting there every day and you're waiting for validation from somebody else that you don't know on a comment that was really stupid, 
I mean, you're probably a fucking loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I see you, and you you definitely won't say that shit to my fucking face because I choke the fucking shit out <laughs> of you. You know? Oh, no, it's it's 100% that case. I actually think in ways adding like YouTube, you know how they have a like uh, feature. They won't show how many dislikes a comment gets or just even on Facebook where at, for a long time it was just likes. Yeah. It creates that need to try and be the top comment. Same idea on like Reddit or anything like that where it makes people try and say things that stand out, like to get that validation. Yeah, yeah. They, they view, system. Yeah, they view it as a cookie. They're like, I, I got rewarded. Like, I, you know what I mean? And I, I think that's unfortunately part of the reason why a lot of social media has succeeded. Cause it's oh, kind of, yeah. it's like a video game. They, uh, I forget, it was like on 60 Minutes, some developer of whatever app, but they talk about trying to get the most amount of time yeah, for yeah. a user on an app and all these little things they do about like the likes popping up on Instagram on the feed. It's like, oh, like I posted this photo. Like, how's it yeah. doing? Like, we all probably, you know, yeah. you know, on your Instagram, you take a look. It's like, oh, after an hour, I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. All these little things that they put in our brains, this is quite for that validation. That endorphin thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they just get that rush. Yeah, the psychology of that uh, has been studied a lot. I've seen similar stories that you were talking about, those candy sure. crush and, and shit like oh, that. Yeah, because yeah. then people start spending money on it because they want to be the highest score. And then you can see your friend's score. So you're trying to beat your friend's score. So, oh, David, that's 16,000 points. All right, I'm going to spend two bucks, get an extra life, and I'm going to get 17,000. Like, fuck yeah, that fool. It's, it's, it's so <laughs> weird, too, because like, I think I live in such an odd world because. I, I really should give a fuck sometimes, you know what I mean? And like, and I don't, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's my biggest I think you're no, better no, but it allows, I think, uh, so, well, yes, that's true. I think it also allows you to express yourself more freely and a more pure, like do what you want to do. Like, uh, uh, with the content you want to put out, like, again, going back to that notion of someone, if you had, like, you have something that's a hit and it's working, like you do comedy, people yeah. like it. And then you write and, it too hard. Yeah, you're kind of just like, you know what? I want to do some singing, like I'll, put, I'll post a singing video or like I'll do a cooking thing. Like, I think it makes you more authentic over the long period yeah, of time. It's, it's weird too, because like sometimes like people say like, well, cause like I have a few stories that did really well, right? So I used to do like these things called carpal confessions where yeah, yeah. people yeah, yeah. Someone, and then you could say whatever you like and I just get them to talk about personal stuff that they normally wouldn't on their stuff. Just because I think a lot of people have like weird stories and demons, but if you say, if you talk with a comedian about it, it can be really funny. Sure. So that's what that whole thing was yeah. about. And it was doing really well. But then because it started doing well and super fast, I got bored with it. And I was like, yeah. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, yeah. Conquer. <laughs> and then, then, you know, because it was yeah. done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I proved my point. So it's like, yeah. on to the next one. But that's kind, of, that's kind of like, uh, you ever watch the show The Office? Yeah, I love so, that. So the British office, like I like the British office, mm -hmm. and also the American office was great, but it's almost like never overstaying your welcome. Yeah. Where like you did something, you did a great job at it, and people, uh, again, back to that notion, they'll chase the success. They'll keep doing yeah. it basically until it gets super you beat old. It to the ground. I think it's way better to kind of be like that indie underrated band. It's way better to be underrated than overrated. Like if you uh, posted only, let's say, like 20 episodes, I'm making up a number here, mm -hmm. and they're like, that was such a, I wish it would come back, yeah. as opposed to 130. And they're like, like yeah, I got halfway like, through. After yeah. season 10, man, it just went downhill. <laughs> I think that's a lot better. Yeah, and it's too, it's like kind of like, I also realized like, who am I gearing my content towards, you know? And it's really first it's to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so yeah. I'm like, oh shit, they're like, well, what's your age group? I was like, I don't know if I have an age group per yeah. se. I think I'm just creating for me. Yeah. You know, and then people have that ability, you know, you just have that, you could watch my shit if you like, no. you know? If you don't like it, that's then cool, we'll, yeah. you know? Is that uh, what kind of led you to the, your latest project? I guess that uh, maybe isn't the biggest because it's hard to say, but uh, you're in the movie Gook, uh, yeah. which did really well. I, I was following well, along your, on your... I, I thought not just in the movie. I thought, did you not have a uh, well, hand in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm There's, getting there. I'm getting... Can I finish yeah, my sentence? <laughs> I was like, I, I followed the whole process a little bit just through uh, yeah. seeing you every, whatever, three months or whatever, and then on your Instagram... Uh, yeah, you, you, you helped produce, you acted in your main role. Uh, but it started as like just, it seemed like an indie film. You went to a couple, uh, I guess is how it always goes if you don't have a budget. Uh, yeah. You went to a couple uh, festivals, it did well. Then I just saw you pop up out of nowhere like, oh, we made it in a couple theaters here in LA. I was like, fuck man, LA's a long drive to go to that. I want to support you, but I'm not going, bro. Uh, and, <laughs> but then I saw uh, uh, in my local listings, it was here. And so I went and saw it and it was dope. I liked yeah. it a lot. Uh, but that's like way, uh, even though there were some funny parts in there and you had like a, a you know, 20% comedic role in there a uh, very different vibe of a movie compared to your Brian McKnight covers or your yeah, uh, yeah, comedy yeah. on YouTube uh, is that because you got bored of these other things or are you just still exploring I, I think it was just more along the lines of like well number one my like really close friend Justin he asked me to be a part of it and then he brought up the project a while ago you know yo we should be we should do a movie together we should do something and he even brought up the notion of like we should probably co-direct this and I was like hell fucking no like, crazy. that's like, a lot I, of work I, bro I do, like five minute videos yeah. I'm like, fuck I'm doing but I like how you, you know, know uh, you recognize you know what you can do yeah. what you can't do it's like well I, yeah I'll be in this I'll help that's why so. a lot of like these young YouTubers they put that title of and that's like another thing of this generation they like to put on a title actor director yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a director I'm like director yeah. of what yeah, man like, these, like, there's like 
Vine Cats, who I love what they do. You know, I laugh yeah. at a lot of their shit, but they write director. I'm like, you fucking piece of shit. You yeah. directed yeah. what? A six second video? Yeah. Kill yourself. Yeah. Out of iPhone. Was, yeah. And so, but like with that was just more like, okay. Um, you know, when you're when you're trying to be an actor and then there's a lot of these like social media stars who try to create stuff, a lot of things that I do is out of spite. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if, there's, uh, almost like, there's almost like a subversive element to it. Like yeah, almost like, I, it's yeah. actually very Korean of me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Korean people love doing that type of shit. It's like, oh, you did that? I'm going to do it better than you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and so for me, it was like, Same oh, I see a lot out. of like YouTube people going to films and they make trash films. They yeah. Oh, so stuff. bad. They don't try to act. They, they think it, and they trash on the art of acting and filmmaking. So you mean yeah, Smosh yeah. the movie was bad? Oh, that is that what you Amazing. That's terrible. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, yeah. like those type of things too. And I'm not, for them too, if they're just doing it for fun, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah. just don't like the kind of like the pretentious uh, things that come along with it when they haven't really set. They haven't made their dues. You know it's the I mean? same thing as uh, we talk about music. Like, all right, you you're trying to sing on YouTube, thing, but yeah. you don't even know like a chord. You don't know basic yeah, like. You know, and like with the whole movie thing was like, okay, like I wanted to show people too. It's like, well, you know, don't don't group me with them. Like, yeah. I'll yeah. I'll do the legwork. You know, yeah. and so with that, it was working with Justin. You know, he helped me a lot with my acting, and we worked on these characters for like you know a few months to really flesh it out. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say because I haven't seen it yet, but judging by the trailer and also even the events it takes place, uh, was it influenced at all by any like Spike Lee uh, work? Like, I'm thinking yeah, about do, I'm thinking like about do the right thing. thing. Yeah, and that's what I'm there was thinking like about. a lot of. Uh, films that it was based off. I'm not based off of per se, but a really yeah. inspired, inspired by. Yeah, or, yeah. You know what I mean, so that's that's where Justin kind of like drew a lot of the stuff. I mean, most of this stuff is all Justin. I was just there to help along the way, but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I mean, the film is so interesting too, and not a lot. A lot of people will get it, you know. So like, you know, I've read a lot of like critic reviews. A lot of them are great. Yeah, Some yeah. Of them Just missed the missed the whole point of the film a hundred percent. They don't the understand. Is it like their perspective? Like maybe they aren't yeah, able to see it. Straight up, it's because they're white. Yeah. You know, no. like if you're if you're a white dude that grew up around white people, yeah, yeah. Grew up around this type of situation, yeah. you're gonna think a lot of things are exaggerated and it's not gonna make sense. Bro, yeah, yeah. sorry, uh, not to cut you off, but racist. It doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 2017. This, it's all in your mind, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone has equal opportunity here. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so weird. <laughs> you're like, like that's cute. Some reviews and then. Yeah, they, they were like, well, this stuff is, you know, the way they were arguing, that's not how a lot of people argue, or, you know, this, like, you know, the Mexican characters were exaggerated. It's like, that's funny because these are, they were these are based gang, on real, they yeah. were actual gangbangers, yeah. you know? Yeah, these but they're are telling all, them, like, that's an exaggerated, yeah. like, Mexican gangbangers don't talk like that. It's like, that's so funny that you could, you could lay an opinion, oh, a fa it's not even an opinion, it's a fact. Yeah. It's about a, our film, yeah. about yeah. something that's so genuine. And when you haven't even lived it or been near it. Well, it's just all perspective, yeah. like you said. Like, it, it could be a white thing. It could be a race thing. But it could be where you grow up. It could just be like, the rest of the nation doesn't even know what L.A. is like. Yeah. They see yeah, L.A. They in, in Rush Hour 3, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, I know Hollywood Boulevard. Like, no, you don't. Like, there, there's a lot of uh, Latin people that live there that barely speak English. That's like, that's just fact. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. two things. Uh, that reminds me totally, I don't know if you've seen the Key and Peele uh, skit, where they get, like, a guy that's an actual gangbanger. He plays, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and then they get the British actor to, like, play also a gangbanger, and, like, the director this uh, white dude like loves the British guy's interpretation of what it means to be a gangster and then Peel's like but I'm actually like from the street it's like yeah. I know this through and through and he's like nah it's just, it's just, it's just not believable to me yeah. so the other the, the, the British guy yeah. that shit's like the real reflection of like these auditions though like you'll come <clears> in and like their perception of like for example there's this guy um, really nice dude like he played this character on um, fucking uh, the on Kimmy Schmidt or some shit. Yeah, the incredible like, Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, that so, show. Okay. Uh, this guy Ki Hong, right? Yeah. Dope dude. He was in like Maze Runner or something like that. But he plays a, he's supposed to play a, a Vietnamese like transient, right? Yeah. But he's speaking in like this broke ass, like terrible, like 1960s Chinese accent. Yeah, so not the even close. Who casted yeah. that person was yeah. like, that's close enough. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's not even a yeah. Vietnamese accent. I think accent. it depends on the goal it's of the movie. Yeah. It depends on the goal of the project or the movie or whatever as well, right? Are you trying to make an entertaining movie? Are you, like, you guys were obviously trying to tell a story and put us in a time and a place where mm -hmm. a lot of people weren't. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you going into the project, you probably had to have that ahead like people won't understand this because they weren't here yeah it's like completely yeah. understand it. yeah. it's, just, it's just more along the lines of like sometimes like when I read I kind of miss so back in the day too I think like you would read these reviews of these films right yeah um, I'm talking about these people would write this shit literally two hours after they watched the film yeah you didn't even like sit and let it digest yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they and they, they they write these like reviews and this is not just for this film I'm not just talking about Google I'm talking yeah, about yeah. music everything yeah, yeah. that's what I hate about it so they don't even give a film a chance or music a chance yeah. so what they'll do is they'll look, watch a film and they'll 
right when it turned on, they're dissecting it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but you're not watching the film. Yeah. Well, and are they so really dissecting an, it? Like, what's their what's their job? They're a movie critic. But they're so what do they but do? They're analyzing it. Uh, they're rather analyzing, than experiencing you're not, you're it. Not, exactly. So no. I'm pretty. Sure when you make a film and you're when you're a filmmaker, I'm a hundred percent sure that nobody wants you to analyze your film. They want you to experience what they're showing you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You analyze it on the second watch. But so I think I, mean? I think it depends because that's my that was my point of like the project, right? Like. Whoever made fucking Thor 18, no one gives a fuck to analyze it. Like uh, our day and age of movies and yeah. pop movies, if you go to a theater, uh, like I'm sure a lot of people that went to your movie knew who you guys were, knew about the project or something. But the people that went there and, and saw the movie that didn't really know what was going on, uh, you know, they just saw it uh, in their theater. They didn't know what to expect. And so they're expecting fucking hammers to throw out and Hulk to smash out of a wall. And so like the critique you give a movie like that and the job of a movie critic in 2017 is much different. It's not actually a movie critic. But even, I would say even beyond that, the problem is that critics are oftentimes incredibly wrong. You'll look at what, like, one best picture for a year, and then you'll see what kind of the cream that rises to the top when it's, you know, movies that are regarded really well. Like, let's say, like, Gone with the Wind, you could go all the way moving forward to, like, uh, when we talk about music, so I'm, I, I love rock and roll, like Van Halen, like Rolling Stone, the magazine, the first album, like the electric guitar, Eddie Van Halen revolutionized it, but it came out in the music critic, uh, critic listened to it, and like he wrote that review that week, uh, and he said, there's nothing new here, it's like not interesting. Meanwhile, fans listened to it, and it became one of the most yeah, yeah. well-respected album of all That's time. That's what I'm saying. It's like, like movies, it's like they're, they're really wrong. Like when they say either this is a bad movie, then wait five years and see yeah. what happens. I don't know or if it's, it's a great movie. I don't know if down. it's about wrong or right, but that's what I'm saying is that they're, it's turned into a job for them. And so it's almost like it's on a treadmill for them, right? They go to a movie, they write some shit. They go to a movie, they write some shit. They listen to a song, well, they write some that's shit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, th that's like the exact point that I'm making. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like with, with those type of like arts, you got to sit and breathe and live with it. So like, like I, I was watching this interview with like Jay-Z, right? And he was yeah. talking about how music was digested back in the day. Not even back in the day. This is like 10 years ago or yeah. so, you know? And I'm thinking about it too. And when he said it, I was like, holy shit, that's actually absolutely right. Yeah. So people would hear an album. Let's say Kanye puts out an album, right? Kanye puts out an album and the next day a critic says, this is the fucking best album ever. How yeah. the fuck do you know that? Yeah, yeah. You listen to how many times? One you know, time, came two out times? like a couple of hours of yeah. it, right? Yeah. And, you know, before too, when people would get these before they would lay a review, like in Vibe Magazine, whatever, right? These critics would get the album like three, four weeks before the release and they would sit with the album for like a couple of weeks and then they would lay their opinion yeah. down. And then that's and that's what I fucked up on because like when I heard that interview, I was like, oh shit, that's right, that's what I used to do. Yeah. Because we never got music so quick. Yeah. So when we had like a dope right album, yeah. it, it stayed with us yeah. and you kind of had that track with you. It was just in your while. car. It was just in your car every day. I'm gonna get ultra hipster for a second. Two things I gotta say quick. Uh, one, uh, just to go back to the critic thing, like how often they could be wrong. With Spike Lee, because like Spike Lee's like my guy uh, for the director to do the right thing. The same year that movie came out, Driving Miss Daisy, which is like the complete opposite type of movie. One, I think it was like Best Picture and Do the Right Thing came out. And at the time, critics were like, oh yeah, like it's it's good. 25 years later, 30 years yeah. later, what is the movie everyone's talking about? That's frequently in the top 50, it's, it's Do the Right Thing. Uh, but I was gonna say, going back to hipster style uh, music, that's why, no joke, dude, I uh, started collecting vinyl because it's kind of an experience where you put the uh, like vinyl on, you sit back, you listen to the whole damn thing. You're not like fast forwarding to the best part. You're not like reading reviews like, oh, track six is the best track. You just put the vinyl on, yeah. sit back, listen, and kind of absorb it. <laughs> that depends on the like artist and the time too, though, because just... nowadays they just want a single to get on the radio so they can make to money rather than back in the day, like they're artists and they want to make an album. It's also just like the culture of wanting to be first. Yeah, sure. yeah. You know, like first I have comment. to be the first to comment the first person to like critique this piece of work before everybody else does you know our media facets do that same type of shit even with like tragedies and like yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah. Attacks so bad it's yeah. just about first to tweet first to make the youtube cycle. video yeah. yeah you know like you're not allowed 24 hours and it's like like i was listening to like the 444 album right and yeah and um when I first heard it, I was like, eh, it sounds like it wasn't even mixed that well, whatever. But then I remember, I was like, holy shit, like I'm kind of just like, my life is so hectic, I never sat with the album. So what I did, like on a long drive, like in traffic, I just put the album from track one all the yeah, way to the end. Sure. It's kind of hot. I was like, oh shit, yeah. it's fucking dope as hell. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I passed up, like there was a John Legend album too, I actually didn't like, but it actually became one of my favorite ones. It was, I forgot which album, it was like Revolver, there you go, that was the album. Yeah. It was like, man, it's not like his old shit. However, I just didn't listen to the album, and so... I kind of moved past it and then I went back to it like a year later and I was, I was like, now I know every fucking song yeah. on that fucking album because I sat with it, you know? And that's what it is too. That thing is like an art piece. It starts from beginning to end. Yeah. There's, it's like albums a, tell stories sometimes. It is, yeah. It's not a, and it's 444 uh, was one of the first albums I listened to uh, 
uh, actually digested for the first time probably since probably since high school when I because uh, I drive places now but like I'm listening to talk radio I'm, I feel like I'm an adult I want to learn what the fuck's happening in the world if I'm going to get bombed or not uh, whereas you're a kid you don't give a shit you just yeah. throw an album in and there's a CD player in your car sure. now I don't even have that um, but I was in uh, Miami uh, shout out to Jacob uh, yep. and my Jacob homie Ross, uh, yeah. Luau Dang talking yeah. about basketball so I was at Luau's house and they're all hi- huge hip hop heads and the album dropped that day and so then they turned it on like smart TV or whatever and it was like a listening party which like I'd heard about as a kid because I've been into hip hop but I've never idea. been part of it yeah. and so yeah there's like six of us and we're just chilling just waiting to go on a cruise tomorrow and we're literally just like six dudes that all like hip hop sitting on a couch uh, and the album's just playing and no one's really saying a word like some of us would bop our head to some songs some of us kind of look at each other like shrug a song off whatever it might be but it was like an actual listening party digest it uh, and that's why I had a feeling uh, similar to you where the first time I heard it though I was like oh this is kind of hot yeah. uh, almost purely because of how I listened to it sure. uh, and I actually digested it Yeah, which, which people don't do anymore like you said like how many people even buy an album they don't one and I'm not talking a Napster this and that conversation I'm talking like you just go to iTunes and download the single sure. like you don't even buy the album or give it a chance it's that Instagram Satisfaction though, where you said everyone wants that like top single. Satisfaction. Think, yeah, satisfaction. I think everyone's just trying to go for that uh, single or to be famous or to get that uh, first like rather than maybe saying something. And that's why I think it is totally different how people used to experience music and it even reflects in the type of music that's being put out. Yeah, it's, it's in every single facet. Like I'm, I'm trying to like, I think, I'm just not like we're fucking old or anything, but it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking about things, you know, it's like, what, why, why, why are things like the way they are right now. It right? is because and of our generation. It's just, yeah, we, we started the Yeah, we fucked up. Yeah, we fucked up. We started did. with the MySpace yeah. game. Yeah, the MySpace angles. That yeah. was like, yeah. yeah. We fucked up. You know what I mean? That that was light way to start falling. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? I was like, oh shit. Like we're, We just kind of like started it yeah. and then it just grew, grew into up. this monster. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's even like in your guys' field, like with just fitness, yeah. right? Like it's, it's amazing. Like, like I, I, I see what people promote with a lot of the products and what they do, but they it, it's just... They really don't give a fuck about the consequences. No. What they oh, do. no. Like, for example, like, you, know, you guys right, already bro. know, like, when it comes to, like, like gear, you know? Yeah, yeah. People are selling, like, fitness programs that you can be me, yeah, you yeah. know? But you're on gear. Yeah, you're spending you three grand. Saying, David, it's you my should... favorite topic. <laughs> yeah, we on, can't bro. say it. We can't say it. We hear we're haters, but you we're can go come across yeah. as haters. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with whatever fitness program you do or whatever, yeah. whatnot, but there's people like me who are layman's. Yeah. Who, prior to me not even doing my research, I thought, I was like, well, how the fuck? Did you do that in three months? Yeah, yeah. you could be like me, bro. Yeah. Just get the program. What are yeah. you talking like, about? Am I eating different kind of chicken? Than you? <laughs> no, is, my, <laughs> is mine not organic? Is that why I'm not sure? Yeah, it's like, how the fuck did those strawberry belts get you those belts? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm trying to think about this shit, and I, you know, and I start researching and I look at stuff, and then you know, I had a, I had a friend, you know, who, who lives in Sac right now that was a bodybuilder, yeah. and he's the one that really put me onto the stuff. Yeah. He goes, that guy's on gear. Yeah. I was like, no, how do you know? He goes, because I sold it to him. <laughs> so it's like, you got the inside oh, scoop. Shit. You know, and these people who claim to be all natural yeah. and all this other stuff, and it's just Ooh, like, why yeah. do you, why My do you, topic. like, why do you do that? You it, know it, what I mean? Like, yeah. you're fucking up these the quick, The quick, mind, no one has any uh, kind of dignity or like self respect because it is all about, it's like, you know what? Like, David, from us taking a look at analytics and who succeeds and who doesn't have like a good idea of how much some people make that are, let's say, like, we call them fake natties uh, in the industry <laughs> that are enhanced but claim that they're uh, natural and they do exponentially better. So if you got the look like that, look that is basically unattainable, it's appealing to our eye yeah. because it's so unusual for the human eye to see that. We're not used to either our genetics or just seeing people to look that good. So we're attracted to that unnatural level, uh, but we want to believe it's possible to be that level naturally. And so they'll sell like five times the amount, six times the amount. So it's like the quick answer, why are they doing it? It's like shit, it pays a hell of a lot more. Yeah, but it yeah. is, it's uh, it's so like industry unique in that sense where like other people aren't selling like T-Pain, even though, shout out to T-Pain, I don't know, if you, you probably know T Pain can like sing. Yeah, like T yeah, Pain's yeah. a gangster. Uh, like uh, I saw him in concert. Uh, he opened for Wayne, uh, and he crushed it. Come yeah. out no auto tune. Stevie yeah. Wonder uh, uh, cover on the piano. Played really? the whole thing. Crushed it. Comes out does a drum solo. Stevie Wonder's my man. Dude crushes yeah. it. But beside the point, uh, he didn't come out with auto tune. One he he did he made auto tune cool because he wanted to change the game and, and he liked it. No. Uh, and that was his style. But he didn't start. Uh, uh, selling DVDs on how to sing like me yeah. uh, and then don't, don't sell them auto-tune or don't tell them about auto-tune. That's kind of what steroids are and that yeah. doesn't happen in other industries. What's your perception, David, of like the fitness industry from kind of like, as you said, like uh, getting into it or like just seeing it as an outsider? Like, yeah, like how, how do you feel about the it's, whole thing? It's so, I mean, I mean, I, I love... <laughs> when, when, you, I, when you make that noise, I know you're about to go in. <laughs> but you're just like, should I? So, should so I? Here's the thing, like I... 
I like the human body and what it can do. I just don't want to do it for myself. You know, <laughs> so like it's it's pretty amazing, right? Just because I grew up a lot of dudes who did fitness, like like a friend of mine, his name is Sam, like he did bodybuilding, and that's how I kind of saw it. I remember watching Pumping Iron, right? Yeah, wow. so good. Yeah, Pumping Iron, like like just when I was younger, and obviously I didn't watch it when it came out, but yeah. it was so fascinating to me. And like watching even like bodybuilding aesthetics has changed so much. Yeah. Like I'm looking at people like Kai Green, Phil Heath. Sure. They look like genetic bulls yeah. yeah versus like during the arnold days the golden yeah, they, era. Were, they were on gear and yeah, shit yeah, yeah. you know what i mean but there was symmetry to their shit yeah. it, looked Portion beautiful. Symmetry. it looked like like greek, greek statues, statues. Yeah. sure yeah you know and so and i'm looking and i kind of watched like i think they redid pumping iron again like on generation yeah. i think iron. one or two yeah. Iron, right yeah. and i was like you guys are disgusting uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what's weird it's like that same idea where everything is taken to the like yeah, the extreme. limit well like to that like niche and niche and niche so like bodybuilders who like want it's called like the x frame like that big bulky look they're like damn that's it it's like but to like the common person just watching that, it's like it's totally lost them there. Yeah, and it's and it, to to no fault of their own too because that's just how like gear technology it just fucking grew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and so it became standard for them to keep up. Yeah. One up. One yeah. up, one up, and it's just grown into yeah. this weird thing. Oh, like, yeah. It's a weird thing. It's spot. so interesting to hear, like, because, like, we feel so sometimes we'll say certain things. Like, I feel the same way. Like, maybe what's more aesthetic or, or what uh, to the eye is, like, more pleasing when it comes to the body? You talk, like, Greek statues or the golden era, right? And we all kind of be like, yeah. But then we see what's kind of being put out. Like, who wins the Mr. Olympia, like, the number one bodybuilding show? And it's, like, the freaks. Um, and it's just it's just interesting how that works out in everything almost in every field I just like I wish like sometimes like for fitness for most people it, you know I think what happens a lot is like when it becomes such a hardcore business money just seems to like pollute a lot of the things that are being put out there yeah. so with, with fitness it's even more irking for me because these, these are like it's like a physical part of their life. Like you're, yeah. you're fucking with these kids' heads. Yeah, oh, yeah. One, yeah, giving them body dysmorphia. Bro. Yeah, like my friend uh, Billy. There's this, this thing called Billy K Fitness where he actually changed. He was a really, really large guy, and because of like macro fitness, he actually you know leaned up. He looks really good. Sure. But he'll get clientele now. They're like, okay, I've lost the weight. You know, I got I got that. I look good. It's like, but I want to look like that. Yeah. Because I can't do that for yeah. you. Like, yeah. Number one, that person's a different person than you are. Yeah. And second of all, he's on something. Yeah, he took a different, yeah, he took a different path. So you need to learn to be content with what yeah. you yeah. have. Yeah, and they're like, well, just give me a program. So I can, he's like, I can't. It's yeah. not a program. Yeah. 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 I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot do it. And he, yeah. if, for him, it's a little discouraging too because yeah. now like the, the mental issue that he was trying to help these people fix, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's still there. It's yeah. fucked. You know, that's um, a lot of industries too, though, because like, uh, yeah, it's not just fitness. Yeah, 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 but everyone's yeah. fucked up uh, psychologically. Like all three of us, but it's, it's definitely probably, fucked up to some it's extent. It's probably uh, the most narcissistic oh, and the 100%. most vain. Where you see that, it's like it's so like uh, Instagram basically blew up, dude. Like yeah. uh, a portion of the fitness industry that yeah. I think I, I think what's weird is YouTube. Like kind of uh, there were some channels that were all about like, hey, look at me. But there's a lot of like information channels. So YouTube was kind of becoming. A more positive space, and then Instagram came yeah. about, and now it's just like, like check out this ass shot, check out how swollen I'm, like kind of a regression almost. Yeah. Well, in the scheme of the platform, like fitness on YouTube is what like five percent or 2%, less. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. But the biggest on, channel has one point five million yeah, subscribers, which is like a, a small comedy channel or a small music channel on YouTube. But in uh, Instagram, like fitness might damn be like fifty yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, it's probably it's probably forty percent fitness, like, forty percent food. On my search feed, like it's either food or yeah, fitness, yeah. which is so oxy. You know? yeah. like, what is this? Like what is yeah. What is Instagram doing to me? Right? That's where you meet in the middle, bro. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's so weird. I, I was going to say just when you talked about uh, perception or how people look and all those sorts of things, uh, you entering now, you uh, you know, you know, have an Instagram account, right, where you're uh, yeah. uh, getting into fitness. What are maybe uh, some like pitfalls or things like kind of entering the game that you experience or like things that you've learned along the way? In terms of uh, fitness? Yeah, yeah, just for your because like, start, like you're starting the process. Like I, I like also the way you yeah. describe it. It's, so, it's like a holistic look. So it's not like, like I want to get shredded, brah. <laughs> So I started this thing called, I mean, for me too, like I, I was very unrealistic with my time, you know, sure. what I mean? and I think that was my biggest pitfall. So when other people, when I started doing this thing called funny fat fit, they executed it way better than I could. And I would, I would talk to yeah. these kids like, how'd you do it? You know, <laughs> they're like, well, they're like, first of all, I started with your videos and motivation. And I saw the time I was like, oh, they have a lot more time than I do. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, well, I just go to school. So, you know, I can make that space and I'm like trying to work in my schedule. I'm like, okay, well I started my day at like what? 10 or nine, but then I ended at two. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that don't work. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then I'm like, oh shit, I have to let go of that sleep. And then what will happen is what I actually found out was happening a lot was that because I was so exhausted, I would start working out, you know, but then I would hurt myself because yeah. I was so exhausted yeah. and then I would get fevers. Like yeah. my body would break what It's inflammation in the body. Like if you have so much stress, like I could, we could understand this, like entrepreneurs, you work like, let's say 10, 12, 14, 16 hour days. 
Uh, if you train it to stress on top of that, yeah. and if you don't manage that, it actually well, equals sleep. global inflammation yeah. in your body. Besides steroids, which, yeah, the only way sick. to rest is, or the that's only way to recover is sleep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what this. Oh, that's what this. We get it. We get it. Oh, we get it. Say hi to no, us. No, 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 no. But oh, you no. didn't. You didn't get the uh, world's so, worst podcast goodie bag on the way yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like with with the whole fitness thing too. Like, and I started to realize too with the roles that I was getting. Like, it was based on my weight, and so I kept on going back to things. Like, yeah. I can't lose this weight because I need to get this role. Yeah. Like, you know, and so it's yeah. You and I talked about that last year. Like, you put on a bunch of weight for a part for like for like Gook, and then doing like these Kim Jong Un and Kim Jong Il. Yeah. And so I was like, well, you know, until I get these things out. Uh, way then I'll, I'll lose the weight but those excuses always come back how sure. much do you think that plays a role in some of these like uh you know uh role playing whatever comedians whatever term is like uh, like a jonah hill or like a fucking it does a lot you know and i think like you kind of get like cornered and scared a little bit yeah. because it becomes a bit of your identity 100 you know? so even some people too like what i what a lot of the kids so there's actually this kid who was on funny fat fit i remember him he tweeted me recently that kid <laughs> lost like Damn, you're like 180 pounds. That's he got, amazing. You got featured in GQ. Oh, oh really? Sick. Yeah. That's so sick. I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, damn, you're really successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like giving me motivation. And I was like, continue with David. And I'm like, I would. But the you thing know, is, you know, the thing about that is. It has We'll we have like deadlift advice. I say this, I joke, I say 50% of the subscribers I meet are stronger than me. <laughs> and like, I look up to you. I'm like, dude, you're deadlifting seven yeah, you're pounds. Fucking, like, you're fucking you're way stronger than me. And I was like, oh shit. I'm like, and the same thing, like, how did you do it? Yeah, it's 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 interesting because like a funny fact it was not only for me but it was more for other kids because they were identifying with their unhealthy habits with me they're like well if he's unhealthy i can yeah. be unhealthy too but that wasn't the point you know yeah. it's just like i just happened to be a fat guy my whole life and i just have a my issue with my self-esteem is so high yeah it I doesn't matter my flaws yeah, like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Damn, i have no flaws yeah, yeah. i wake up i'm like damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my body yeah. looks tight you <laughs> let know? me sing while i make these eggs yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> And so, like, um, a lot, but, you know, for them, it was different. They suffered with a lot of self yeah. issues yeah. based on the way it looked sure. and how they felt. So, Funny Fat Fit was a way for me to, like, kind of get these kids to, you know, kick in the gear. I'll tell you this one quick story. So, yeah, I went, when I went to Colorado, there's this kid that came up to me, you know, eyes down, just really, really large kid. And he was just, wouldn't make eye contact. He was, like, shaking, right? And I looked at him. I was like, yo, what's up, man? Just being really nice to him. And trying to get him to relax and he goes hey like i just want to say i'm a really huge fan of yours he goes like this is like the first time i've been out in a long time i was like for a long time how long it's like it's been like a year i was like you mean out of your bedroom it was like something along those lines yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? and yeah. it was That's so serious. he was in the theater when that colorado shooting happened oh. oh batman yeah and he said like my videos helped them to relax That's so serious. That's serious, man. that yeah. shit made me feel good and he was like well i gained a lot of weight because i wasn't moving and so he said he was gonna try funny fat fit and he was like, I've been trying it out. It's been helping me out a lot. I'm like, cool. And this kid was just looking down, shaking. Yeah. I was like, all right. So I actually got booked for that same college show next year. The kid comes up to me, uh, you know, whatever, like very fit yeah. and whatnot. He goes, hey, you remember me? I'm like, no, who are you? Because I was like, that kid last year. Like, like, remember I was yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, real impact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, holy shit, you guys are fucking changing your lives. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, like just kind of what that impact does. And, you know, people are like, well, you could do it. I was like, yeah, I can do it. You know, I'm just trying to figure out the time to do it. So that's why, like, I'm learning this year, too, to really kind of, like, prioritize th things a little bit better. Yeah. Like, my health isn't going to get any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're getting old, bro. Yeah. yeah, and then I got the two car accidents that my fucking yeah. spine oh, yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, you were it happened that. twice. And, like, looking at God, I'm like, do you yeah. want me to be fat yeah. forever? He's telling you, dude, the role's coming. <laughs> the role's are coming. Just stay yeah. put, man. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I was going to say, uh, for you, uh, talking a little bit about that maybe uh, subversive element, I want to shout out uh, your Instagram, because that was, it, it actually directly inspired me to take a photo. <laughs> Where, like I think I think comedy that's a beauty of comedy where you uh, talk uh, like a gook is a serious work but the idea maybe in some comedy pointing out universal truths are harder to say yeah. just up front yeah and so you did you did a, a, like a photo series that that was amazing or basically you're poking fun out of like Instagram models yeah, like so good. fit models and so all good. those sorts of things yeah. like that element you went a little <laughs> extreme I got turned on but besides yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. the heart wants what yeah. it wants 90 yeah. percent make knows. it uh, yeah but I'm like, surprised you didn't get flagged on some of that but how do you I've been mad but how do you how do you think of those things because like i see that what's so good about it is that it's comedy and it's also making a statement you know what i mean but not being heavy-handed yeah I, it's just like some I that's the way to do watch, it I, it's not that i hate watch it's it's, it's comedic to me you yeah. know but i'm also making not only not only am i making fun of instagram models yeah i'm also making fun of the guys that comment on their shit 100 you know, you know yeah. what i mean the thirsty so guys these the girls white write these like very 
fake, like superfluous, like these com these these captions. Yeah. You know? And it's all about an ass shot selling a supplement. Yeah. Exactly. It has nothing but to do with But it's motivational on how hard they're working and grinding. And then you read these guy comments where they're like, oh you're my god, angel. you're so you're yeah. so altruistic. You're so smart. And I'm like, you're, you're so smart. a loser and you're also <laughs> Oh yeah, you're both losers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's you actually favorite? would work out well together. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my favorite my favorite are the uh, Bible quotes. There's this one girl, like I I can't think of the name and I don't want to roast anyone in particular, but like uh, she posted a uh, so it was promoting a supplement. The supplement was way in the background. Her ass was literally seventy five percent of the screen. She was getting the a lot of likes. The Bible verse it was a was a, like a psalm. I'm like, what is yeah. going on? Yeah, like, what goes on in your mind? Weird, like the cognitive dissonance yeah. of what you're doing. It's amazing. And I, and I used to get so mad because like they they specifically write these thirst trap type of like comments, right? And but it, it just irritates me because like it'll be like the hottest chick like she goes i wish there would be a guy that just wants to cuddle me right now yeah. i'm like you yeah <laughs> yeah it's her, tit, it's her tits out i was like i wish guys didn't care about my body and only wanted my mind like yeah. put those tits away and maybe we'll get to know you and also too like you know when you're working really hard and you're grinding out and then they write that one thing where it's just like it's been such a hard day and I'm yeah like, i want to know what your hard day is <laughs> the, the, the i was worst taking thing. a photo i had to take 75 of it and then it just wasn't the right angle the worst like, thing how is, was your hard day yeah and then i you know i see on their instagram story Obviously, because I'm a perv too, and it's still hard. Hey, look, and, yeah. you know, and I'm like, and they woke up at twelve, and I'm like, oh fuck, how hard was your day? Yeah. The worst thing is Come that on. guys are just as bad right now on Instagram, oh, yeah. too. Oh, or worse. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I often say, so I made that joke, and it's the truth. Like, it's not uh, hating on women. Where uh, I made a post saying like. If a girl posts like a good like selfie photo, it took like ten shots. If a girl posts like, a good butt photo, it probably took twenty shots. If a guy posts yeah, a jacked photo mm -hmm. of him posing yeah. under the right light, it was yeah. over a hundred photos. And, and it's tripped to the hardware store to get a better bulb, oh my God, uh, yeah. lighting bulb, and all that shit. It's so weird. Yeah, people it's, don't even realize it, that. It's just weird, man. Like I just, I'm just observing like social media and what people do with it. Yeah. And it, it's actually more of a reflection not on that person that's posting, on the people that follow 100%. them, and the people that believe it. Yeah, one hundred percent buy their shit. A hundred percent. Yeah. You know? and they just they just they fall for it and i'm like how dumb are you no. but at the same time i'm still falling yeah but, so but at least you didn't buy their shit yeah, well, at, least at, least, least, <laughs> at least at least we could recognize it i think a uh, part of the hope and maybe when we're so critical uh, on our spectrum on the fitness industry is because we hope coming into the industry we saw all the previous mistakes the, uh, the misleading magazine titles yeah. like the, the bad exercise yeah. advice that like, shitty dvds so the hope maybe of us like the like, if we're like trying to be altruistic here is like to make a little m like move the ball forward make a little bit better you yeah. know like not repeat the same mistakes and so it's discouraging and it's disappointing to see some of our peers and also sometimes we fall in that trap making the same mistakes like we could be better you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. like we, we, you said that uh, statement about like we see vlogs now like you see vlogs back in the day they had like some cuts and now they're like a million cuts in like three minutes we kind of started some of those things <laughs> so we are responsible and we're kind of like trying to reel it back a little bit so it's not like hating so much as like we yeah see we're like we're like the guys that brought that fucking catfish from thailand and released it to the river like, yeah not that good yeah, deal? No, yeah. and then it just takes over the entire <laughs> ecosystem just, we're like oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's not what we're expecting yeah, yeah. what's yeah. uh what's leading next david so you uh, you had this movie it's out of theaters now yeah it was kind of the summertime yeah, i think december 2nd uh, it's gonna come out on Blu-ray. Okay, dope. And cool, then man. iTunes, and so everybody can cop it there. And if you're somebody who uh, that that film, by the way, is not about the Rodney King riots. It's just about the people that experienced what was happening during that time. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. film Gook. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Rodney King riots was a backdrop. So we're not. It's not a documentary. Right. If you want to watch if information and facts, then you watch a documentary. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna see. It set the tone of like that the age uh, uh, because like you even said how people uh, now or cultures or, or whatever don't even know the racism now, but like we don't know the racism. Hundred years ago, oh, and no. they, they don't know the racism. Context, like, kind of, maybe to some of the riots uh, that were happening that, uh, during the time. Yeah, but also uh, today, like even like some sort of uh, context. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. huge reflection yeah, yeah. of what's happening today too, and kind of like yeah. how either we've digressed or we haven't grown at all. Yeah, the parallels. Yeah, and so you'll see that in that film too, and it's not it's it's going to be about the people, and I think that's like the important part. So don't don't look at it for like fact checking and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. It's just to see like how two communities. They were kind of going through the same shit, but they yeah. couldn't see. They're slowly. They almost got together. Yeah, it almost <laughs> happened, bro. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it was almost cool. It was. It's. It's like this whole thing that, like, where I, where I always say too, it's like when you're kind of experiencing your own pain, you don't care about to empathize else's with somebody pain. else. Yeah, yeah. So see someone else's All you see is hate. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then it just causes two people who are actually going through the same shit yeah. to hate each other because they then don't something... see the similarities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like when I was going to, I'll just kind of end it with this. It was just. Yeah. I was. Um, I, so my parents own a black music supply store. They still do it to this day. A what? A black music supply store. Oh. Yeah, so we sell weeds, whatever, all that shit, right? So yeah. that's, that's, that was my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So, 
Sick of singing, bro. I believe. <laughs> right, so <laughs> I I would like, just walk stands <laughs> up and walks out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had this, this weird experience where I kind of like grew up around a predominantly like black neighborhood. Right. And uh, you know, my best friend's best friend's black as well. And I kind of related to both cultures and I couldn't really understand what was going on. And then not until I got older, my friend Ricky kind of mentioned it, it was like it was like it was kind of weird because we see a bunch of like you Korean dudes opening up businesses in our neighborhoods, and we see you selling us stuff and profiting. But meanwhile, we can't even catch a break and get a business fucking loan. Sure, you know. So all we see is hate. But we're actually mad at the wrong people. You know, we're mad at you for coming. But for us, it's like we don't even see like we came. We got the business loan yeah. for whatever America gave us, and we thought it was amazing. Yeah. And all we're trying to do is put food on our table yeah. and then help our kids. And not out. take food away from you, yeah. which is kind of maybe what they felt. Exactly. And so like all these like racist like undertones or stuff that we didn't have coming into this country. That's what this country threw at us. Yeah. You know, and told us this is truth. Yeah. So my parents, you know. For whatever reason, didn't buy that racist bullshit, and then you know they they just love everybody as public because he's a pastor as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I never grew up with that, so I never understood why people, you know, not everybody, but like that twenty percent or fifty percent of the customers hated us so much. Sure, you know, majority of them were really nice. Yeah, but there was that little thing that was there, and it was because they just didn't understand each other, you know, and so yep. it, it kind of sucks. It you sounds know? like your life was a uh, gook. Yeah, it was yeah, good. Yeah, it yeah. was good. Yeah. That, so my character is who I was growing up yeah. as a kid. So that's the, that's the reflection that you're going to see in that film. Yeah. What does a, a, like an actor or, or someone in your position go from there? So like YouTube crushed it. You got over it. Uh, now you go into a, a real movie and you're into it. Uh, you want to get into more acting? Yeah, dude, well, well, and how does that how does that process go? Yeah, not, we, not only what do you want. Do people come to you now? Do you still got to go to auditions? How does yeah, that show work? I mean, now it's like, so I got signed to an agency. Like all okay. these things are going on. I'm I'm starting to act uh, next year. So you're a movie star on our podcast. <laughs> so I, so we'll I'm, still be here one yeah. year later. Yeah. 100% though, I don't even know if I like acting. Yeah. I created oh, that. Oh no, I, I bet, I bet, dude, you're, you're, you're over it already. Land, no, you're going to land a role that's going to be like, <laughs> like critically acclaimed and then you're just going to peace out. <laughs> I'm calling this right now. <laughs> well, I, I already feel like that now. So it's, <laughs> like, so it's like, I made Gook and yeah. it was from the, with, with my yeah. friend Justin and you know, I got to help him with it and it was from our hearts and it was, yeah. it did really, it got into fucking Sundance for crying out yeah. loud. I didn't expect it to get into Sundance. So when I found out I got into Sundance, I started bawling. Yeah. Yeah. I was like tearing up, bawling. I was like, what in the world is going on? So because that goal of getting into Sundance, which yeah. was a life turn goal of mine, sure. happened a little faster than expected, now I'm a little lost. Well, in the next movie now, you know, I, I don't know that much about that world by any means, but I've gone through 10% uh, of the process. Uh, now you got an agent. Now you're going to go to auditions, and now you don't have a word at who you are or what you say. Exactly. You're Kim Jong Il, and every yeah. next movie, like you're yeah, fucked now. Like so your heart doesn't matter. You know, I've been auditioning now for the past four or five months, right? And I've gotten really close to a lot of things, and you know, I'm not really even if I get a, a rejection at an audition, I don't really give a fuck, you know. So now yeah. it's just like I'm kind of looking at this, and I'm like, do I even like this? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I did it once again. It was always for me first. Yeah. So now I'm going to these auditions where I like the art and the craft of it. I don't like the bullshit that comes yeah. along with sure. it. Well, now you're in like Hollywood. It's yeah, different Hollywood. than YouTube it's and it's different, different than yeah. making a movie with so your buddy. So I'm thinking like, oh, do I even, do I just like acting itself or do I just like creating? Yeah. But, but I'm, my thing is like, you can't knock it till you try it. So yeah. I'm going to try it first to, to the best of All my the way in. Yeah, what are most of the auditions? Uh, like TV shows, movies, commercials? It's, it's, it's TV shows. Yeah, cool. uh, Commercials, I do have a commercial agent, but they keep sending me shit like a few hours before I told my yeah. kid, do that. I got a million things going on. Yeah. So, but it's going to be TV shows and movies, yeah. What about a things, so you talk about doing a lot of different endeavors. What are some things maybe in the future that you find exciting or you want to hop in? So like, like acting is kind of like maybe let's say last two years you did gook and like you're trying to uh, maybe move forward with that you did some comedy a singing is there anything else you have that oh, cooking me, on your like, youtube yeah like uh, what are some other passions that you think oh food is definitely oh, food so is like, yeah because you know, I, I have a software place called drips and swirls out in k it's right amazing <laughs> but yeah. you know it is that, amazing so uh one coming to sacramento in the next three years bro you should have a, a vice show that would be cool that would be you go around it i i think you could be a great host because I, I love all those you ever watch dead set on life yeah um, yeah yeah maddie Mathis super cool guy at Toronto and then there's a uh, what is it Huang's World yeah. where you have, like just like a show like that and then uh, uh, Action Bronson had a yeah, yeah. show for a while oh, yeah. I, I think you could totally do that dude yeah, yeah. I, I, I just like food and I, I kind of want one of my uh, food places to franchise out and go really big Very cool. yeah. that's not even a money thing it's just yeah, yeah. you it's, want it's impact yeah, yeah impact, impact thing yeah. Yeah. no I, I love that I love how you have so many different goals yeah so it's just that life goal. so like I've kind of been able to tick off a lot of things also the other thing is to fucking lose get back to my original weight <laughs> that would be like the, the best thing possible yeah. 
We got you, David. Yeah, yeah. They, they got me on that. So it's like that. those goals I kind of want to knock out. I, at the end of the day, man, like it's so corny, but I just want to be happy at whatever yeah. I do. So yeah. Are you there? I'm getting there. You're you pretty know? happy? I, I just yeah. want to retire. So yeah. I want to retire and be able to do what I want to do without money being something yeah. that's looming over my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. So it's Which like, is the main thing that determines what you do. So exactly. just remove that from the equation. So when you remove that from, so people say like, well, if you become a millionaire, you'd be bored. I know I would. Yeah, no, yeah. I think I'd be able to do half the things I want to do before I totally I'm dead. Get you. Yeah, yeah. You I know? totally get you on I that. I would paint. I would be a ballerina. Yeah. I would be a UFC fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would do anything like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, like yeah, you could explore. Exactly. Yeah, that's money amazing. was no option. Yeah. How would you live your life? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, you'd be a lot more free. That is a little bit lucky that our generation got to where, you know, my goal is the same but like how can i do what i love and make money off of it and, yeah. and that you know and, and then remove the money equation even yeah, well, you don't have to think about well it. like you just said like uh, you want to franchise your your ice cream spot mm -hmm. not to not to be a billionaire but because then you know you'll have enough money to live and you want to franchise your ice cream spot yeah. like that's the same reason like I, we want to start this podcast me and omar yeah. just literally three days ago the decided, world's worst <laughs> podcast uh, but yeah. same thing like i like creating content i like having conversation with cool people if there's a way for me to market or monetize a way for me to kick it with cool people and have a conversation yeah, like not? fuck you i'm gonna do that like fucking america yeah. like america's yeah. dope and it allows me to do this so yeah, yeah 100 <laughs> well david i would say thank you so much my man for being on where can people find you you can find me on YouTube, David So Comedy, Twitter, on the Instagram. If you go to the Instagram, you've been slacking on Twitter, bro. I used to, I used to follow you. I mean, I still follow you. I didn't unfollow you, bro. Don't yeah, get hurt. But you used to like go ham on there and crack me up. It's hard to like keep up with everything, man. Like Too much drama. Twitter, Twitter's the best though for I feel like for comedians. Yeah, like I feel like I, I want to like be on Twitter more more often, but man, sometimes it's just difficult. How many like, shits you take a day? Huh? How many? He's gonna say bring bring that That's damn right. uh, to bring phone. the phone right in. Bro, and just start tweeting. You don't bring your, you don't minutes. bring your phone in there. Not sometimes. I germs, bro. I know that sounds. Like, <laughs> I'm just like you're no, taking shit, you wiping your ass, and no, then you're you also on the phone. What's get, going on here? You get it's like twenty dollars. It's fucking. That's why you always you always have pink eye, bro. No, twenty dollars. You, you they sanitize your fucking phone, bro. Twenty. dollars It's like a laser thing. Really? Come on! Well, it's 2017. So, how often so it's literally it's like 2017. That's that's part of the Instagram starter pack, like, <laughs> yeah. the sanitation. Yeah, yeah. It's literally like 20 bucks. So just scan your phone, like we're clean. And then what? A little bit of butthole on your yeah, phone? Yeah, There's know. worse things. There's butthole. <laughs> that's the quote from you right there. A little bit of butthole on your phone. There's a yeah. butthole in your mouth. You're all right. That's a t-shirt, dude. My clothes is out. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you. Give us a review. Share with your friends. Comment. I don't even know what they comment. They get like a review or some shit. Give us the. I don't know how review. any of this. You're the one that has experience being a podcast host. Bro, you're a, supposed to anchor a this podcast. The end. Leave a review. Give us a fucking only a good review though. Yeah, give us those stars. Yeah, no, we'll take shit. We'll take your shit. We'll take your shit. We'll take your shit. And then we'll send David oh. at you. <laughs> David, <laughs> David's gonna be in the comments Bro. on our YouTube and fucking smash you out. Yeah, this is the this is the come up, David. We'll uh, see you a year from now. No, 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 no. Bro. Six months. Yeah, yeah, we'll have you in three or six months. No, you down? Our goal is to be He's top down. ten uh, fitness podcast <laughs> within a few months. I know we can make it. Happen. No, we're in it, and David's in it. Well, especially once he lands his first uh, Kim Jong Il role on a movie. I I almost want to get fatter and talk more about fitness. Dude, that could be your game. game. There's actually, that you know, it's funny. I, I, not to throw shade, but yeah. last thing I'll say, there are uh, some people on like Instagram where uh, that's kind of happening. Oh my <laughs> you know, like, god! The worst shape they get. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm that's just the future. Shape, just talk more shit, dude. Appreciate you all. We'll catch you in the next one.